praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, victory. Yeah. <laughs> 
honor God today. As our ushers are preparing now for our time of giving, we have a, just one announcement, one brief announcement on next week. It, on Saturday, we will have our Pro Heritage Day celebration, and that is Saturday, July the 31st, starting at 10, ending at 12 at Macedonia. Macedonia will have a gospel jazz brunch. So come out, celebrate. Uh, we will have Bahamian and Soul Food. It says, come friends, come salad. Coconut candy, y'all been talking back to me. They have pre sales and on site sales. A complete dinners include fried fish, fried or baked chicken, three sides, dessert, and a drink uh, for the low cost of $20. Crafts and face paintings for the kids. So let's celebrate a mass. Donia's history with our soul food uh, brunch on Saturday as we will start our Grove Heritage Day celebration here at Macedonia uh, from 10 to 12. And then there are other flights that are, are going around uh, via paper, via social media as the day continues with the Grove Heritage Day celebration. Is that all right? All right, let's, let's prepare now to give, give as though God has blessed you. You can't be God's giving, no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more you shall receive. Somebody said, press down, shake it together, and run it over. All right, if you want to give today, you're on social media. You can give to www.macedoniannbcmiami.com slash give. You can text 833 or you can cash out the dollar sign Macedonia NBC Miami. As our ushers are now preparing to collect the offering uh, in the church today.
Yeah, we thank you. Lord, a blessing you have restored upon us. Give me praise and give me honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's 
starting at verse 1. First Samuel, not second, but first Samuel. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first Samuel. I didn't know I could do that. First Samuel. Say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say, Lord, help me. All right. First Samuel. Get when you get to 30th Street, turn to First Avenue. And that's where we'll get started. First Samuel, the third chapter. I wanted to get the ones who were just getting out of the refrigerator time. Get there. First Samuel is the third chapter, starting in verse one. It says, "And it came to pass." Y'all Bible say that? Yeah. When David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Malachites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken the woman captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Four verse says, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam and Jezreelites, if I ain't say it right, y'all will catch it on the way home. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal and Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. This is the part I love the most. It says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abadar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover Oh, look at somebody say, recover all. Oh. You may see the presence of God today. If I can use for a topic today, if I can use for a topic today, it would be encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Brothers and sisters from the text, we can see that David is at a low point in his life. Of all the trials and circumstances David faced, the trial he is now facing what seems to be one of the hardest of them all. The problem is he is facing one that could make him or one that could break him. Can I switch today? Yes. Has anyone ever been there before? Have you ever faced a trial that maybe could break you or make you? Something came along unexpected and you didn't know if you would have enough strength to get through it. Am I making sense? Yes. It knocked the wind out of you. You didn't see it coming. It may have been a problem in your 
relationship, an issue in your family, a battle with your health, a struggle in your finances, a situation on your job. Whatever the circumstance was, it nearly took the life right out of you. Yes, yes. Just like David, you were discouraged. You had almost given up hope. Oh, you almost threw in the towel and took a seat on the sidelines of life. Oh, but God stepped in right on time. Can I preach today? Y'all yes. make preach in the A songwriter once said in some mercy that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? I know, I know, I know, I found out to be a great help in the time of trouble. Can, can I tell you today that even in your darkest hour, you can find the strength and comfort in the Lord to get through the most discouraging times in your life. Yes. Psalms 121 said, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from what come in my help because my help Oh, come from the Lord. When you don't know what else to do, you can look ahead of your situation and you can depend on the Lord for his help. With God on your side, you won't be defeated. You've got to look over your circumstances and up to the hills from will come into your help. Yeah, there have been there have been many situations in my life where I had to rise above my circumstances and look to God. My biggest trials did not break me, but they made me who I am today. Can anybody testify today that I am who I am because I Yeah, I have more strength than I ever had before. Is anybody like David in here today? You will rise above your circumstances. Tell, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, keep your mask on, but tell your neighbor this situation ain't gonna break me. Yes, it won't break you. From the text we learned that David and his men left the city to go join the Philistine army to go to war against Saul and the Israelites. Well, the Philistines didn't trust David. Y'all know it. After all, he is an Israelite. And so they sent David and his men back home to Ziglai. That's like the U.S. trusted Russia to go to war with us. We just wouldn't trust it. Y'all miss that. Yeah, I, I the Philistine that. army, Philistine army, didn't trust David and his men. And if this wasn't enough to make David feel discouraged, he is faced with an even greater disappointment when he returns home. Just when you think you have had the worst day possible, or the worst week possible, or the worst month possible, or the worst year possible, you have another issue you have to face. Am I preaching to somebody? Yes. Anybody ever been there? Yes. After a long journey back home, David and his men were expecting to come home yes. to their nice families and a pot of collard greens yes. and neck bones and cornbread and a lot of your content. But instead, they find their city burned in fire. Yes. And everybody was taken captive. They even took the last Oh, well, talk to David and his men probably never imagined that they would come home to find such a big loss that would cause them so much distress and sorrow. They lost everything. What do you do when your home is turned upside down? What do you do when there's fire in your camp? Will you be able to stand? And just look around. Does anybody know what it's like to lose everything? Y'all ain't gonna talk back. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. 
there have been so many natural disasters happening in the world. There's been fires and mudslides and tornadoes and hurricanes destroying homes and, and neighborhoods and, and buildings are falling. And what I what I'm thinking I'm going to are uh, going through ain't nothing compared to what somebody else is going to go through. At least I have a roof over my head. May, I may not have food on the table, but I got somewhere to lay my head. Yeah, you have to learn how to be thankful even in your situation. Yeah, it's not what you want it to be. There's somebody worse off than you. Yes, David left the city unguarded for three days. And the Amalekites took full advantage by raiding the defenseless city. And I'm sure the Amalekites heard that David and his men left the city for war. So they conspired to go wipe them out. It's like when robbers know you're going out of town for a while and they plan to break into your house. Y'all ain't gonna talk about it. They, they didn't even have to guess because you put it all on Facebook and Instagram. Y'all ain't gonna tell me anything. Don't leave me out here by myself. Yes, yes. You be trying to figure out well, how did they know? But everywhere you went, you put it on Facebook. You went to Burger King. You put look, I look at my layering. Y'all like my layering? You went to you went you everywhere you go, you you got people gotta be in your bit. Yes. I remember a time growing up that mama and said, keep everybody out. <laughs> now it's a challenge trying to keep people in your bit. Yes. Yes, yes. Sometimes you are out doing things and while your intentions are good, you have to keep an eye on what is going on in your own home. Yeah. Keep an eye on your children. Yeah, yeah. you got to check those phones. Yeah. You got to check them. You yeah. got to check them. Yeah. Be smart yeah. like me to get phone company to, you know, give you access to them. You got to check them because you don't know. Yeah. And maybe they may not know, but they may fall into something yeah. that can get out of I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't, it ain't that you're trying to be the police, but you just want them to be protected. And sometimes we got to protect our kids' minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, don't, they didn't go through what we went through, but they're going through a whole type of other situation. And you got to be able to protect them. Yes, yeah, yes. And then if you. Just get fed up like me, just say, give me your phone and put it on the table. <laughs> give it back to when I get it. <laughs> I like te technology, Mr. Murphy, but we have got to monitor. And some of us need to monitor our older saints too as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the kids. We have to monitor and guard what we take in to our minds. We have to protect these from our kids. We have to protect the older folk too. Because sometimes you stumble across something. And you can't get out of it. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to it. The enemy is looking for Sister Widow for an opportunity to sneak in on us and take what belongs to us. But the devil is alive today. He can't sneak in on it. The book of Isaiah says, in the 59th chapter, the 19th verse, it says, so frankly, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. You know, we have to declare, we have to declare that the enemy can't have our children, the enemy can't have our husbands, our wives, the enemy can't have our homes, can't have our finances, can't have our health, can't have our jobs, can't have our church, can't have my joy, the enemy can't take my peace. Don't let the devil sit in. Why are you not paying attention? 
some writer said, don't let the devil ride because he don't want to try. We have to stay on the lookout. We have to stay in the word. And we have to stay prayed up. The book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the tenth verse says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. The preacher once told me, you have to be suited up and you have to wear it well. Tell your name, you got to be suited up. Yes, yes. Verse 4 says, then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. They cried until they couldn't cry anymore. Has anyone ever been there? It seemed like you, your biggest fear came upon you. The problem you faced hurt you so bad that you cried until you had no more tears. You cried until you had to get pity of life and get away. You cried and you suffered a loss that was almost too much to bear. And while it could have seemed a minor to someone else, it was a big deal to you. People tell you to move on, but that's not so easy. Life didn't seem like it would be the same anymore. You lost the love. You lost your job. You lost your home. You lost your marriage. You lost your dreams. And sometimes you just need a moment to get through your emotions. There's nothing wrong with grieving, Sister Rivers, but you can't stay there too long because you'll find yourself in a slump. The devil will try to steal your job. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible says that after David lost his son, he got up, anointed himself, and put on some clothes. David got himself together. Yes. Got to get yourself together. Remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let your heart be glad. Yeah. Through God's power, you can get back up again yeah. and get through it. Tell your neighbor, get up. Y'all yeah, I mean literally wake them up. They're going to sleep. No. <laughs> there are some trials in this life you'll have to face. That will leave you almost helpless. I'm preaching if I'm preaching to myself. You so But you have to learn, Sister Hearing, to hold on to God with the little strength you have left. Second yes. Corinthians says, in the 12th chapter, the 10th verse, it says, It is when you are weak that you are made strong through Jesus Christ. You may not realize it. But you are made stronger in every trial that you go through. You ever notice that some of the strongest people in God are the ones who went through a lot? Amen. They have been through so much that they move through life like elastic with the ability to bounce back from anything. Yes. And somebody say, well, preacher, why? 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 And that's because they have learned to trust and depend totally on God. You ever been there before? When you ain't had no choice but to depend on God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you, you talk to the doctor, they wouldn't help you. You call your friend, they couldn't figure it out for you. You come talk to him. You had to depend on God. Job lost everything he had. But he still trusted God. And he never turned against God. And because he trusted God, God gave him double for his struggle. Yeah. And it is amazing how people try to blame God for why bad things happen. Yeah. As long as everything is going good, God is so good. Yeah. But as soon as something happens that doesn't follow their plans for their lives, they start to doubt God and get angry with Him. Wow. They stop going to church. And stop praying. Stop reading the Bible. Do you know that Christians are not exempt from going through trials and tribulations? We go through just like the world. 
The difference is that we got Jesus to help us to get through it. You ought to use the trial that you go through to be a testimony to others. You will be able to encourage someone else one day who has to go through what you've already been through. Am I preaching? Yes. All right, I'll leave then. I'll leave. People use like circumstances to excuse them from their obligations and duties in God's kingdom. Oh, this happened to me when I was little and I have issues with my family and I lost my job and they did this to me and they did that and she treated me this way. They looked at me that way. Da 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 That's why I don't go to church no more. Some about the church people. This is what I love the most. This I love this one the most people. Every time I go to church, it looks like the pastor got a new car. Why are you worried about that? <laughs> you ought to hang out with him. Maybe he'll let you borrow it. <laughs> it seems like the church people doing better than the people in the world. I can't do that. They should. They should look like it. Exactly. They should. When are you going to ever get over it and move on with your life? When are you going to ever let it go? You still worrying about what the usher did in 1958. She's dead and gone. He was the Lord. And you still all get all powered up. When are you? Look at somebody and say, when are you going to let it go? You won't come to church because the pastor back then they said something to you in the sermon that was really the truth. We were trying to save you, and you won't come to church. When are you going to let it go? You're not coming to church because you can't have it your way. You want to tell the pastor what to do, you want to tell the deacons what to do, you want to direct the choir, you want to get on the deacon board, you want to be an usher. But you can't do what you're supposed to do. So now you won't come. When are you going to let it go? My God, my God, my God. Listen, this is not in my notes, and I apologize if I'm off text uh, for my scholars that are in here today. But we're living in a time where we got to let things go. We got to be prepared to see Jesus. What if God was to come back right now? My God, my Lord. Would you be ready? Yes. Would you honestly be ready or would you have to get some things straightened up? The old folk would say you would have to clean up your house. Yeah. Is your house in order? Yeah. If the Lord was to come right now, because time and time again, God has showed us that no man knows the hour, nor the day, nor the minute when he will return. And I want to ask Macedonia, especially, are you ready if he returns? My God, my God, my God. Or would you have to wonder if you're ready? Look at somebody say, let it go. Yes, 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 yes. You got to get over it. I don't want you to miss out from seeing the promise land. Because you won't let your past go. I, I, I don't want you to miss out from the goodness of God because you're still holding on to what happened last year. You're still holding on to what happened 10 years ago, 125 years ago, 60 years ago. Something, you, some of y'all hold on to things that you didn't have anything to do with it. It was your mom and them issue, but because mom and them told you you were being grown and they did this, you hold it on to something they fussed about and they really got over it. They three is not, and you still win. Am I making sense? You got to let it go. Verse 6 says, and Lonnie, help me get out of here because I'm going to have to get into trouble real quick after church. 
now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all people was grieved. Every man for his son and his daughter. It was at this point in David's life that he seemed to have lost everything. David is in what my mama said, son, you're in bad shape. Israel won't help him. The Philistines don't want him. His family is gone. Everything he owned is gone. And while David is facing his own grief, he now has to deal with the fact that his men want to stone him because they feel like it's his fault. Am I making sense? Making sense David at this point has no support. David's spirit was low and he felt pressure on every side. If I had to sum up everything, I would say that David is having a very, very bad day. When people face so many disappointments, okay, they sometimes live in constant discouragement. They become so defeated that they don't even care about life anymore. They are just like a ship lost at sea, tossing back and forth with no clear destination. They wake up every day with no expectations of anything. They go through the motions. How many of you know that trials can bring about despair and hopelessness if you let it? There comes a time when we have to press our way through and find strength in God. Don't let every trial knock you off course and get you down. Don't let every person knock you off course and get you down. Let me bring it a little closer because y'all thought I was talking about people and, and the work is up. Don't let church fall knock you down and get you off course. You fight with everything you have in the inside of you to get through. And depend on God for his strength. Somebody tell the neighbor, I'm going to fight through this. The text says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Somebody say, but David. Okay. David had to come to a place where he learned that the Lord, his God, was his only strength. David knew he was weak and he knew he needed God's strength. Listen, you can't depend on other people for strength and encouragement. David, guess what he did? He encouraged himself in the Lord. And you have got to do the same thing. You have got to get up from your circumstances and your problems and your issues and your trauma. You don't have to stay down and discourage. With the strength David received from God, he was able to deal with the problems he was facing. Once he received the strength, David was able to move forward and take care of business. He was able to bounce back from his circumstances. Sometimes you have to speak to your circumstance. Oh, y'all, they don't make preach to himself. And command everything to line up with the word of God. All you need is faith the size of what? Okay. A mustard seed to encourage yourself in the Lord and receive his strength. Let me say, let me say that again. Y'all missed it. You have to speak to your circumstance. Y'all, y'all, y'all. You, you have to speak to your circumstance. Sometimes, Miss Murphy, it seems funny to me when I do it, but sometimes my circumstances get on my nerves so bad, I have to speak to them and say, hey, listen, God told me to tell you to move out of my way. And guess what? They'll move. Either they'll move or I'm just thinking they move, but they move. You got to look at your kids. Sometimes you got to look at them. 
You, you, look, you look at him and say, you're going to do what I say, and you're going to get out of my house. Sometimes you got to look at your wife and your husband. You, gotta, you better do right, or I'm going, and God will bless me with somebody else. Sometimes you got to look at your house and say, I'm going to get a new house. They're going to be bigger. They're going to be 10 bedroom, 3 car room. You got to speak those things. Look at that old floor you're driving and say, you know what? You really are the same things. You have to speak. If you talk to most uh, wealthy people, they'll tell you that their mindset was that they would be. You got to speak it. Speak it. You got to speak it. Y'all need to talk to me. I remember, I remember before I came to Macedonia, I sat in the cafeteria where I was pastoring that one day, I'll never forget this, and this will actually led me to Macedonia. Y'all think y'all voted for me, but God did that. I sat there in the cafeteria. Say, God, it got to be a church better than this. This is too much for me. I can't really do what you want me to do. I don't have the help. I kid you not. A few months later, guess where I was at? I was at Madison Public. Yeah. 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 Now, it, it puzzled me at first. I thought it was a trick. But God put that day back in my mind, and I can't forget it, that I sat there in the cafeteria uh -huh. saying that, and two months later, and there were people that led to that, but I y'all to be in my business. That God allowed me to come in contact with. So that what I spoke came to pass. You gotta speak. I, I'm gonna live. I ain't gonna die. I don't care how many strains of coronavirus come out. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna put my mask on. I'm gonna take my shot. If they come out with another shot, I'll take that because I'm going to live and not die. If I lose my job, I'm going to have money. I'll be able to take care of myself, my kids, my wife, put food on If the church put me out, I have money to take care of myself. I don't even talk to you. You got to speak it. Sometimes people hold you. Because you think that you need, they think they need you, and you need, you got to tell that person, listen, God will supply all oh my yeah. God. The God I serve, yeah. they may throw you out, but guess what? Maybe it may take a few days, a few weeks, but God will come right around, and He's going to bless you, and guess what? When God bless you, He ain't like something like you double bless you or something. You have more than what you already have. You look better than the way you started out. Am I making sense? Yes, David used his strength to ask God for instructions on what to do next. David was ready to take back the devil with the devil. The soul from him. And so David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue the truth? And sometimes you gotta inquire. Of the Lord, Lord, what is it that you're having to do with this situation? And David says, shall I overtake them? Now that David got strength from God, it was time to make a move. Yeah. This is the first time David inquired of the Lord while he was living out among the Philistines. He usually did things on his own. I'm free somebody today. But this time he went to God. For guidance, because he knew he couldn't defeat the Malachites on his own. He knew that he needed God's help. And he wasn't going to do anything without God's instructions on how to move. So I asked him today, Macedonia, what are you going through? What are you going to do about your situation? Are you going to pick yourself up from that situation? And seek God like never before? Or are you going to 
Take back what the enemy has stolen from you. Take back your joy and peace. And take back your health, your finances. Take back your husband, your wife, your job, your home. Go overtake that problem that is standing in your way. Don't run from your problems. But Sister Will, you got to face that giant head on. Just like David took on the life. Yes. Do you know the God you serve? Amen. Jeremiah said, is there anything too hard for God? And I want you to know today that there's nothing too hard for our God. Yes. And after David, the David asked the Lord if he could pursue the Malachites and overtake them. The Lord replied, he replied, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them without fail and recover all. God gave David the green light. Not only did God give him the green light to go ahead to pursue them, but he told David that he would have the victory. God told David that they would overtake the Malachites and recover everything they took from him. My brothers and sisters, David was able to move forward and complete in complete confidence, knowing that God was with him, and knowing that God had his back. I want you to know today that God got so back. Pursue and overtake. Recover all. You have the victory. Is there anybody in here who know you have the victory? It's all
little low. When you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Instead of picking up your cannabis and your alcohol, y'all get quiet on. Instead of doing things that would not be pleasing to God.
me if you are watching Facebook Live. Say this prayer for me. If you want to be saved, you want to be saved. If you want to be saved. If you're gone. I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sins. I'm willing to change it and turn from my sin. I invite you, Jesus Christ, to come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my soul, come into my life. It's my personal Savior. Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So
So it's literally there for says that requires you to get to the next level. Don't look at me crazy, but God is trying to get you to the next level. What you're going through now is just a testimony so you, you can tell somebody else that the God you serve is a healer. You believe that? God is getting ready to heal you in a mighty way. He's getting ready to open doors for you in a mighty way. Brother Isaac, God is getting ready to open doors for you in a mighty way. And there's a test. We have to pass the test. The only way we can pass the test is that if we pray and stay connected to God, there's a test. There's a test. You're doing good. You're going to pass it. One reason you're going to pass it is I ain't going to let you fail. But you're going to pass it. And it is going to be through the healing of the anointing oil that will take you through the test. Now, let us be mindful of our sin and shut And I know I'm holding you up. You said it's for something, Pastor. We shouldn't be in church this long. And we need to have a meeting on you. And, and you don't have to. It's okay. The Holy Spirit will convict your heart. Okay? But we, we, there's sick among us. So we need to pray. We need to come together as a church. Not so much of always coming together to fuss about business, but we need to come together to pray. Okay? We come together a lot about the lights, the carpet, the rugs, but we seem to never really come together and just the audience all that. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need the, the elders to pray. The strong ones to pray. You know who you are. You know if you've been in church over 10 years, you, you're an elder. You know how to pray. You should pray. Pray. We, we have uh, multiple people in the hospital. Sister May is in the hospital. We, we, we speak life over her. That, that sickness will not overtake her. Sister's in the hospital the same time. The same house. So we speak life into their situation. We pray for Reverend Daniels that the healing anointing power fall on his body. We pray for Brother Isaac and pray that God will heal him, that God will cover his mind, keep him in perfect peace. We, we pray for Brother Tyrone that God will heal him, cover him in the blood. Pray, we pray, we pray, we pray for Sister Lillian. Even though she's here, we pray that God keep her in perfect peace. The anointed oil fall fresh on your life. And I may be missing something. Well, which side is that? Get Robert back there. We pray for Robert. Robert already healed because Robert keeps that in our faith. He's healed. He, he, he's healed. He's healed. And I, I ain't want to see him maybe get into Robert's business. I ain't want to do this to him yet. I ain't want to do this yet to Robert. But Robert going to bring some folks to this church. They're they going to they gonna, they gonna be saved just because Robert brought them. Y'all don't know Robert had an influence on some folks. He don't even know it. But God told me to tell you since your mama brought it up that he's getting ready use you to bring folk to Christ. And I don't necessarily, when I say bring them to Christ, I don't necessarily mean bring them to Macedonia. But I'm talking about Christ. Macedonia ain't going to do nothing. It's going to be God that saved. Not the building. Oh, y'all get, get funny with me. I'm not looking for numbers to come up to the rivers. I preach it two or three people. The same way. I did it all all day. You know, I preach it each time wrong. Uh, uh, a line and Mike and, and Sean, we had that church. So I'm not going to preach to just a, a crowd of 10,000. I'm trying to save souls. And so we, 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 we petition God as we stand all over the that His anointing power will flow on the lives of our people, on this church. And we'll speak life, we'll speak health and prosperity. Even in the summertime, which seems like it's our lowest time financially, we'll speak life. And we'll 
will get through the summer. Some of our educators don't have jobs during the summer. But we speak life. That God will take care of our needs. Even if we don't have money in our pocket, we won't miss it. Even if we don't have money in our pocket, He'll still give us gas. Y'all ain't got that kind of money. Speak life. Lord, I don't necessarily have to hold it in my hand, but you just take care of my need. We speak like the devil is trying everywhere. Sister Henry is trying to come at you every which way. My mom would say, but loose. So we got to stand up in prayer. Make your request known to God. Make your request known to God. Whatever the situation Whatever the problem is, guess what? It may seem weird to you, but to God, it doesn't seem weird. Talk to God. Tell God what you need. He's on the main line. All you got to do is just call him up. Tell him what you need. He ain't like the doctor's all the way. See, if you want to speak to someone so press the money, no, you just call. You ain't even got to call him. Man. You just think about it. He'll come and take care of you. How do y'all believe that today? I, I want to see what your faith is. How do y'all believe he's a healer today? He's a healer today. He's a healer. Some, I don't know, there's some testimony in there. You can testify that you don't look like what you've been through. So we pray now. God, we pray for you. We thank you for your anointing power. God, we thank you now. To rain down your healing on the lives of our members who are going through right now. God, we 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 petition you today, God. God, that you will anoint the individuals from the crown their head to the soul of their feet. God, we we know that you can do everything anything but fail. God, we realize that the devil is walking to and fro on the earth seeking all he may be bound, but God, we, we ask you to put a head of protection around this God. God, lift up a head around this God that the enemy can't do us no harm. God, protect our minds. God, keep our minds in perfect Stay on you. God let the devil know that he can't attack our mind. Because we belong to you. So God, we, we ask you to rain down your peace. That will surpass all understanding. God, your joy. It's your unspeakable joy. God, we ask you now. So let it fall. God, let your favor fall on our lives. God, we need you. We can't do nothing without you. God, we can't live, we can't breathe without you, God. God, you are the reason. God, why we are here, God, it, it was nothing but your grace and mercy that, that kept us. God, 
dealt with how to take our evil. So we speak over our evil God. And they shall live and not die. God, they shall live and not die. God, we speak, God, speak. God, get out of you, but put down guns and, and weapons, God, and pick up Bibles and, and microphones so that they can be instruments here. We speak, we speak. We speak over our lives. God, instead of our kids wanting to be something that they know they should be, God, we ask that you be. You give them eyes, God, and allow them to be what you have them to be. God, doctors and physicians, God, lawyers and teachers and, and police officers and, and preachers, God, and, and whatever it is that you have them to be. God, the devil can't have our kids. We serve notice to the devil today that you got to leave them. God, you got to get out of this. The devil got to get out of this community, God. God, get out of our home. God, leave us alone. Tell the devil to leave us alone. You're not going to win. Because the God we serve, he's protecting us. The God we ask you now to show your favor over our finances. God, lift thy finances up. God, so we can better your kingdom. So we can enhance your kingdom. God, we thank you. God, for the ones who are traveling, God, we ask you to give them travel and grace. God, cover them on the roads, the highways, the airways, God. Keep them in perfect peace. God, for the ones that will travel on this weekend, God, we pray that no hurt on the day to come upon them. God, be there, then drive.